Hey guys, it's Allie from Play and Play with Allie. <laughs> I will just say right off the bat that my kids are running up and down the hallway like crazy right now. This was like the only time I had to film today. And uh, you might hear like little hands on the door and just them giggling and laughing in the hallway. <laughs> so just letting you know that that's going on right now. Um, but today's video is going to be a Prismacolor like kind of how I color with them type of video um, and it's going to be kind of short and to the point just because like I said I have limited time to film today and this is about the only day I have to do it. So first I'm going to show you all like how I normally store my Prismas and how I take care of them and then we'll get started on one of the flowers on this page and this book is of course Joanna Basford's World of Flowers and I had picked out this page because the flowers are nice and big you'll be able to see them a little easier. So, um, I know this is Castle Arts, but these do contain prismas. <laughs> um, I follow, like, if you've ever watched Jennifer's Day at Coloring Bliss, she has these wonderful charts, and actually I'll pull one out for you. Should have done this from the beginning. I think my prisma charts are in this book. Um, but she does these wonderful... Um, yeah, she has these wonderful tritone sets and my chart is colored quite horribly just because I did this like when I was very first starting out. But it gives you like a dark, medium, and light for each color on the color wheel and it kind of makes it a lot easier for beginner colorists to just jump in and start making blends. I have no idea what my children are doing, but they were rattling the toys. Sorry about that. <laughs> my daughter wanted some water and she knows if she wants something fast she comes to mommy so she came and knocked on my door. But they're all taken care of now. So this is the case. I just kind of um, rejiggered a case from uh, I think this was either the pastel tints or the uh, metallic castle arts pencils because it fits 48 pencils. And I just arranged all of them into these um, find the page again. My goodness, I ought to just turn it. The page. There we go. So all of these pencils and pencil numbers are in this case. And I also stick in like I picked out some warm and cool grays, a couple of browns and skin tones, and um like a gel pen and my black and my white and my uh this is my uh colorless blender. <coughs> Excuse me, I've really got a frog in my throat right now for whatever reason. But yeah, this is where, like, this case comes with me everywhere I go, and you can see that I do use it quite a lot, so my pencils are getting kind of short, especially my reds. Um, so that's kind of how I take care of these, and that, that's how I store them in their little tritones. Because I am a newbie colorist and that just makes it so much easier to pick like color schemes that will work together and I already have like ready-made combos that I can go to. With that out of the way, yes I do have the full 150 set but and I keep those on my desk. The rest of my Christmas colors I keep in this big giant bucket <laughs> and uh, it's not the most yeah you know, pretty solution, but it works for me. So, we are going to get started. Um, I think we'll do this flower right here since it's a little simpler. And a lot of these pencils need sharpening. So I think I'll probably use either a red violet or a violet since purple is my favorite color on this flower. And I do have several different sharpeners, but I like to use this one. It was recommended by oops, Pamela's Passion for Pencils, and I have found that it works really well. So I'm going to go ahead and sharpen these.
end up with some crumbly bits once I'm finished, but that just kind of happens every now and again. I'm going to kind of zoom you into this flower. I'll try to monitor where like everything is in the frame because I'm filming with an iPad in my hutch right now, so <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing much. My allergies are going crazy, y'all. I don't know what it is. So I use Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds um, for most of my blending. I'm still very much a newbie and I don't, I'm not super confident in my coloring, especially when I'm on camera. But there we go. So I just put down the lightest color first. And I'm going to fill in this whole petal. And if you want those tritone sheets, I will put the link in the description to Jennifer Day's website where you can, um, if you sign up to be a free member, then you will get those. Um, I'm pretty sure that she has those available for free. And if not, it's not a very high cost at all <coughs> to get them. And then I go in with my mid-tone. I think this is my mid-tone. Yes, this is my mid-tone. And um, I'm going to come in from tips where those lines are. I'm doing just super light layers right now. <sighs> kind of give it some dimensionality here. One thing I don't like about Prismacolors is how crummy they get sometimes. And I use a variety of different strokes when I color, like you'll see me going just straight up and down or scribbling like in circles. And I'm also going to do the same thing here. I want to shape this like shadow part a little bit better to where this kind of looks like it's curling down. I'm not the best at figuring out how to do that where this overlaps. I'm going to add a little bit too. I'm going to kind of extend this out a little bit very, very lightly. And same thing here. I'm going to extend it out very lightly. Then I'm going to go in with my darkest tone. And usually, with my darkest tone, I use more of the scumbling or scribbling in circles strokes. I'm not very good at like shaping my shadows and highlights yet. I just do like a very basic know what makes sense to me or what looks good to me kind of placement of my shadows. I do pay attention to like where try to pay attention to where things overlap. Look right here. Go in and add some of this darker color. I'm not very good at talking while I'm coloring. So I forget what I'm doing, or I forget like what my plan was, or the next step was. So forgive me. I'm a little here, there, and everywhere. Now I'm going to go back with my mid-tone, because I feel like I've darkened things up. I'm going to press a little bit harder. I think the problem down here is, yeah, I needed it up the sides a little more. I do have a little brush. I have like a gajillion paint brushes, but I can't find like my makeup brush that I use to brush my crumbs off. Um, yeah, I have no idea where it is. Some of these brushes are still a little bit damp from being washed. We won't worry about it. I'm just kind of blowing them. So, just bringing this 
more out. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Just kind of trying to get rid of that transition between, <coughs> excuse me, my dark and my mid tone. And I tend to still leave kind of harsh transition lines because I'm not paying attention, like I'm so focused on one part of the coloring that I forget to like go harder towards the dark and lighter towards the lights. So then I end up with these weird looking transition lines. Most of the time I can fix it, but sometimes they're still kind of there. And then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with my lightest color. You can see I kind of got rid of my highlight there, so I'm going to go darken up the darks to create more contrast. This is a common problem with me, so I tend to go to like light with my mid-tone going into the light, and then when I go back over it with the light, it just all blends together and becomes the same color, and that's not what I'm trying to do. So, trying to work on preserving my highlight better. Just going in and kind of redoing my darkest spots to preserve some of that contrast. Then I'm kind of trying to blend it into the mid tone a little bit by lightening my pressure. I said guys this is not my forte yet. I am a lot better than I was. I'll try to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go back in. Blend out those darker lines. And then, <coughs> excuse me. Kind of blend this out right here. That seems kind of harsh. Guys, like, I am never going to claim to be the expert on this kind of thing. I am still very much a learner. Add a little bit of depth to the sides here. Just to kind of make it seem like the petal is curling on the sides. At least that's what I'm trying to go for. If it's coming through or not. And then a little bit of this darkest color, like right up against that edge. Same over here. Although this side is kind of getting messy. It's hard for me sometimes to see right where that edge is. And then I'm going to blend that back out. So mid tone. a little better. And then I'm going to take my white and try to get back some of that highlight washed out. Just kind of trying to tint this pink a bit. And at the same time blend some of those strokes out so you can't 
see this as well. I think adding that white did help a little bit. Um, then I'm going to go in with my darkest color and I'm just going to kind of pull some of these little lines in. Kind of give a little bit more depth. I'm going to add some of the same lines right here. And that is basically how I use my Prismacolors. Um, I kind of did with this white pencil what I would have done whoops, with my blender. Um, I kind of don't want to go back over this with the blender, but um, it the white does add more of a tint, which is what I was going for here to bring back some of that highlight. But this will kind of like brighten up the colors, in my experience at least. It will brighten them up and um, you need to really have done a good job like hiding your transition lines when you use this in my experience because like if it's a harsh transition it will show up even worse with the blender pencil unless I'm using it wrong and it's supposed to help with that. In which case please let me know in the comments. <laughs> how you use the blender pencil and if you have that same problem. But yeah, um, I wish I had time to do a few more petals for you tonight, but this is pretty much all I had time to film for you guys, but I hope that that was helpful. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing kind of like a newbie colors process. And like I said, I got the um, Prismacolor Tritone um, color combos and the um, the um, Rule of Thirds blending technique from Jennifer State Coloring Bliss, and I will link her website and her YouTube channel in the description below because um, she's been a huge help to me in my coloring journey so far. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing how a newbie colorist uses Prismacolor pencils. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful, colorful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!